Uh, the board members opportunity to remove items from the consent agenda, should they wish to. Um, Director Christensen, I wanted to um, perhaps talk about the uh, 4.3 special board assignment status report. Um, I just had a question on that. So should we talk about that or how does that work? Um, if it's just a question, we can answer that at the staff level. And then if the board would like to have further discussion, I'd recommend removing the item. Oh, okay. So Mike, should I ask the question now or when we get there? Now? Oh, so um, uh, former Director Daniels was on um, the public outreach group. Um, and I was wondering, is, that's a special board assignment, right? Well, a special board assignment is, 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 no, it's not. It's not ad hoc. Okay. It, it, these are just items that the board said address at some point in time in the future. Uh, and so we keep a list of it to make sure we don't lose track. But he was on a committee. Okay. And I think we have few s s just backfilling that slot. Is that right? Am I, or are we going to bring it to a board? We're actually planning to bring an item at the next meeting to review oh, yeah. the standing committee appointments. Good. Then I'll wait till next meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Good question. Any other items? Move approval of consent agenda. Oh, well, we're going to have a oh, public comment. Sorry. Public comment. You are correct. Okay, then I'll second. Okay. We do, is it all just all in favor now, right? We're all is there no, there no public comment? No. Nope. We don't need a roll call. Okay. So uh, we, have, we have a motion and a second, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that's approved. Okay. You should summarize instead of passed unanimously. What? You should say it passed unanimously. Oh, passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Oral communications. Uh, members of the public ready to speak? Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner. It's too bad we couldn't have traded places with uh, Congressman Panetta because they have a lot of people yeah. standing outside and can't hear. So anyway, I'm glad we're here. <laughs> um, I, there's an issue that I did write your board about uh, regarding the treatment, uh, the advanced treatment plant on Chanticleer and my concern about um, truck traffic exiting the treatment plant. Um, a couple of months ago, I saw a large delivery truck coming out of the, the construction site at the Chanticleer site, and it blocked traffic. So it was a visual, uh, it, it really made me realize when when the plant is up and running, there will be large trucks coming and going from that plant, some of them carrying hazardous chemicals. And that was never anything that was addressed in the EIR or either of the two addendums. So I think it behooves your district to really look into that. How will large trucks coming into and out of the advanced water treatment plant um, affect traffic, and how will that be dealt with? Some of these trucks will be very large, and that corner coming from Highway 1 southbound is a very tight turn, that, and I witnessed a large truck having to take up multiple lanes of traffic to complete that turn. So I hope that you will look into that and uh, issue some sort of a, a traffic study uh, the overpass is, is in progress now. So that will be an added piece of traffic there. That overpass was never included in any of this, the EIR or either of the two addendums for the project. It needs to be included and studied. It may require another addendum. <laughs> So I, I request that you do that. Uh, no one ever responded to my communication about that issue. 
The second piece that I want to ask you about is uh, regarding an oath of office for special districts that it seems the county uh, administrative officer has put in place. I saw one for the first time for tomorrow's Housing Advisory Commission, and I don't ever remember seeing that in your uh, packets, so uh, I request that you look into that. And then finally, um, I am watching the uh, comment period open on the state's direct potable reuse guidelines, and um, I have a submitted comment, and I hope you will too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any comment, any indications from the board? Yes. Um, I got to attend my first conference in Monterey, the CSDA conference, and I did a day of pre-conference and earned a certificate in governance. So it was really helpful to um, just kind of learn about what it really takes to be a good board member. And um, it was wonderful to be there with Melanie and Ron as well. But I wanted to just very briefly um, give you two little informational pieces that I thought were interesting. These were from people that I met at the conference. So um, one person I met was a man named Paul who works for East Bay Mud. And he told me all about what was happening there. But he said that his number one issue, I know it's a large agency, I think they have like a million ratepayers, but it's the PFAS regulations. And they are going crazy with trying to figure out how to do that. I, I believe that the state has um, involved the 30 top um, water agencies in California for the next two years or something. But, but I mean, these things are coming up. And so um, I thought that was really interesting to share that information with him. And then second of all, I had lunch with the um, general manager from the Paradise um, Water District. And she um, like talked me through exactly what they've been doing the last couple of years, recovering from their devastating fire. And the water and the hardware, and she explained everything. I wrote it all down so I could get it right. But it was very interesting. And then at the end of the conversation, she said the last few days she'd been in touch on, and on the phone with Maui because they'd been calling her to find out what they should be doing about their water. And so just as a really nice um, person to person, she's told me we should be following exactly what Maui's doing because their district is exactly like ours, like the location, the size, like a lot of it is reflective of what we are. And um, I just thought, yeah, we should be really following through on that. So just two quick things to note I thought were interesting and I wanted to share. Thank you. Yeah, actually, the, even the more apropos is the San Lorenzo Water, water District and up there in uh, Ben Lomond. And, uh, that area, that place had similar devastation. You know, the, um, you know, the plastic water pipes. Yeah, with the CCA. And then right. flushed back down. So people, yeah. even people who hadn't uh, been burned out uh, were, had they didn't have access to water because it was contaminated by burned up in the fire and that was another hard hard thing to recover from yeah and just a quick note um another conference that coming up in november is the water reuse conference which has been a really good interesting conference so i just wanted to point that out and then also just um the next meeting i'm gonna need to be remote and okay. I don't know if that's possible for MGA, so I'm not sure who my alternate is, Rochelle. But I don't know if you'll be here for the 19th of September. Or 21st is there. 21st. 21st. I just wanted to bring that up so we can figure it okay. out. Well, I'll, I can check and see if it's if I can do something remotely there or not. Yeah, I can check with Tim. I'll check. check with Tim. That would be best because, yeah, it was, it, last, the last meeting was in the Capitola Library. I don't know if they have anything like that there. We'll see. Okay. Well, at this, this point, I don't think we can do anything. No. It's not on the agenda, so we couldn't. No, we can't. Yeah. You're just laying the snow. 
I'm just letting you know I'm not going to be. So we might only have one representative in MGA. And okay. I'll, I'll be there, so I will take notes for you. Okay. I can, I'll check and see if I can yeah. do remote. I'll be there, too. That's the yeah. uh, OK. Anything else? Maybe we just want to add that also at the conference last week, thank you, Director Balboni, for attending, as well as uh, President Christensen. The uh, SoCal Creek Water District was also recognized with a special award for technology. And it was in appreciation um, for us using the technology of SkyTem to better understand the water conditions of the groundwater basin. So um, we, we accepted that on your behalf. Thank you. Yeah, I, could, I guess I, could, I can add a comment to that, too. It really took me back to, uh, well, it's, it wasn't really that long ago, but, you know, the way things moved to get a project done, uh, you know, we just do that, make the decision, kept moving on. It took me back to that. Just, what a phenomenal uh, uh, proof of concept it proved, it proved to be. It was really actionable. It was really... We all came together. It was very, it was very worthwhile, um, and that's what we—that's what the award was for. Great. Um, Since we're all divulging our plans for the summer or whatever we're in now, I will not be able to attend the October seventeenth meeting. Okay, so it's I can't even do it remotely because I have no idea what the time difference is. <laughs> And well, the MGA is September twenty-first. Oh, she's talking about our October. Meeting. Oh, this is the yeah. Um, September twenty-first. I'm going for Parent Weekend. I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm all over the place. Okay. Right. <laughs> and then you're not here for the. But I can be remote. I know we might as well write it now. I don't have anything else to add right now. Okay. Uh, no reports. Item six. Uh, item seven. Uh, seven point one. Conditional and unconditional wilsers are none. And oh, see, so here's something good coming up. The water. 7.2, the Water Harvest Festival. Yes, good evening. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna be presenting a little bit of information on the upcoming Water Harvest Festival that we will be hosting um, on October 14th. In 2018, the district um, ha hosted our inaugural Water Harvest Festival. Um, primarily, we started this to promote environmental stewardship, um, environmental protection, and to get the word out related to the conditions of our groundwater basin and also the community efforts to collaborate. Uh, we had done a lot of um, partnerships through the Water Conservation Coalition around the same time with the um, Santa Cruz County Fair, but we also wanted to make something that was a little bit more local and more intimate within our service um, area boundary. So. Becca Rubin and Vaidehi Campbell had been talking to several water agencies that held festivals similar to this in their community, and they wanted to spearhead and do something directly within ours. And so our first one was at the heart of Soquel Park, uh, right down there in Soquel Village in the fall time. And we had costumes and pumpkins, and we had quite a few community um, booths to kind of share more information about you know, activities and events related to environmental stewardship through other nonprofit organizations as well as the city and the county. Um, subsequent to that, we um, have moved the festival around. We did have it at Blue Ball Park in 2019, and that was the year that we also started to dedicate the Water Harvest Festival in memory of Vaidehi. And we have been able to continue that tradition um, and, and hosting a water harvest festival. During COVID, we went remote. And this, um, this year, we will be having it over at the 
Chanticleer Park, which is just down the street from the Pure Water Soak Health facility and kind of in a very mid-central area between Santa Cruz and the district. Uh, we've also been able to get some sponsorships um, as people of booth. We have over 15 community booths that will be at the event, as well as some entertainment. Um, previously, we had the Banana, String, Banana Slug String Band, and this year we're going to be having Sambida. Uh, we'll also be having a food truck. And we're also going to be unveiling a project that we have partnered with Orange County Water District of utilizing their purified water and making kombucha. So, you know, as, as a way to kind of get information out, have people understand that the water is purified, we've been, you know, passing out bottled waters from Orange County Water District. This year we're going to be using um, um, and partnering with uh, swell, I think what's, let me make sure I have, Living Swell, it's a local kombucha company, and they are going to be producing 15 gallons of purified kombucha that we'll be passing out. We'll also be kind of documenting um, and kind of illustrating, you know, through photographs and, and later a future story on how we created the purified kombucha. So we... We will have face painting. There's quite a few activities there. Each booth is required to have kind of an activity for, for children and school-aged people. And then um, we'll also be having a raffle. So we're anticipating quite a few people to come. We are inviting the board, and we will, are starting to do a lot more outreach with some advertisements as well as some social media posts. So we um, are excited to have it. This is our fifth fifth year event, and of course, if you guys have questions or any kinds of suggestions, we're open to it. Great. I think it's great, too. What flavor kombucha, though? I believe. Up to them, right? I, oh, yeah, it's a surprise, sorry. But okay. <laughs> it will be blue, I'll say that. It will oh, interesting. <laughs> and the other question is, uh, is it mandatory for directors to get their face painted? <laughs> No, but it is a lot of fun. <laughs> and I understand that the MGA is going to put a booth this time. Too. Good. I can see this growing. Yeah. So then I have a do a procedural question. Or is there a public comment on informational item? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. Um, I, I'm happy this is happening, but I really think it should be in the district's area. Um, the Chanticleer Advanced Water Treatment Plan is not in the district's service boundary. And um, I understand maybe why it's a a good public relations thing to have this activity there in Live Oak, but they are Santa Cruz City water customers. We're all in this together, I understand that, but I think Blue Ball Park was a good location, and I wonder why it isn't there now. Um, I, I want to suggest one of the the most educational, and it is still stuck in my mind, um, displays that I've ever seen at any of the many water events I've gone to locally was at Pajaro Valley Water Management Agency's uh, first outreach meeting about the College Lake Recharge Project. And they had a, a very large clear plexiglass tube with representational uh, strata of the aquifer. And I think that'd be a great thing to build and to, to have at these events. I really miss Vi. <laughs> she was a gem. And uh, just in closing, you know, I read through the agenda and saw that there was going to be vibrant blue kombucha. And I have to tell you, the first thing that came to my mind was tidy bowl, toilet bowl cleaner. <laughs> you might want to change the color. <laughs> being what it is, especially. Thank you. I have no problem with the blue kombucha. No, I, love it. I, I drink blue herbal tea all the time. <laughs> I have no problem with it. 
That's my only comment. Thank you. Any comment? Any other comments from the board? Okay. Um, move on to 7.3, the 2023 water protection consumption reduction. Yeah, I'll take that one, uh, yeah, President Christensen. Uh, this was brought about by, I think, uh, uh, Dr. Jaffe expressed some curiosity around, you know, why is our water use, uh, you know, roughly 13% year to date below the previous year, or what we budgeted for. And I know this was not a scientific approach, but I couldn't help but taking uh, the, the advantage of um, my colleagues from other agencies. So while we were at a, a luncheon together, I said I showed them this graph, and I because we, we were doing it virtually, and I said, "Hey, this is what we're experiencing. Is are others experiencing the same thing?" And we had we had every general manager from every agency, um, and you know I know Watsonville said, yeah, we're like 13.75 below year to date, what we were last year, and all the others said the exact same thing. So, uh, and I asked them, well, what do you think that's going to attribute to? Get, you know, think, think about it, and then, so we don't influence each other, and everybody went around, they thought it was the weather, the rain. So, I mean, it's nice to be able to see us and then have other agencies that they're, they're experiencing the same thing now, whether that's exactly it or not, um, you know, uh, what cause and correlation are not always tied together, but it seemed like a, a good place to start. And I know there may be other questions, and I have done a little bit of research, but very drafty at this point. So I'm here for questions or. Uh, well, I appreciate you getting the report back. Yeah. Where, where were the, uh, the districts? Uh, it was everywhere from uh, Pajaro to uh, Santa Cruz. Watsonville. Okay, so they were in our area? Yeah, uh, they're all local. The, all the local GMs, uh, San Lorenzo Valley, uh, Scotts but, Valley. But basically in the same weather pattern. Yeah, you know, uh, down in Coralitas, it's a little different. It's a little drier, you know, but roughly the same. Um, yeah, as close as we can get as far as uh, comparison to other agencies, that's for sure. It'll be interesting to see what happens now, you know, in this part of the year. All, you know, like right, and you can see be along the, you know, the weather, you know, when it's gone back to normal, it's kind of spiked back up in that, what is that, month? July. July. And then I did run some other numbers, um, just thinking that there, there might be some, you know, some curi further curiosity. And I, it, it, was, it was done late, but I'll, I'll just show you, throw out some things that we noticed is, we looked at just how irrigation accounts alone had reduced from their previous year, right? And the numbers, they, they greatly vary from like 20% up to 600%. The account itself decreasing, but when you do assume that's 5% of our usage, which I don't know why that number sticks in my head, but you know, that's, that's a 30% reduction down to a 1%. So there, there, you can see a fluctuation in that, but irrigation accounts are not always the the right place to work because of the way they're operated. They don't always respond like a homeowner will. I did look at, if you take the um, um, data from the finance report, the Gen July 1st, 2023 uh, finance report, item 4.4, .4, it, it shows, we don't have it here, but it shows build consumption by tiers tier one, tier two, for residential and other sectors. And even though it was for a full year to date, what I saw there was, in just simple math, a 7% reduction year, the, you know, this year from, um, from the date all the way around, and then last year from that same time period a year later, earlier. A 7%, we, this year we reduced 7% in tier one compared to last year or what's budgeted. And then in tier two, the reduction was 23%. Mm -hmm. So that delta between those two is 16%. So it's not exactly apples to apples, but it's another not, piece. Not at all, because there's so many more tier one accounts, I would imagine. There are a lot of tier one. It wasn't even over the same time period either, so I want to yeah. acknowledge that. Well, I appreciate that you yeah, did, we can do more. delved into it. But this is exactly the type of thing that, I would base decisions on rates about just, um, and you know, I appreciate the anecdotal information, but 
once when you start looking at the entire water use of the district and how it changes over time, you can you could uh, tease out how much is perhaps due to the weather, how much is due to other factors, and the that's the type of information that I would like to have to be able to determine what a what a fair rate structure is. And, so. Yeah, and, and we are following up on the Sue Holt stuff, so that if that plays into it. And I was looking for the, if you remember, I think what, if I get the essence of what you're talking about, that remember the bell-shaped curve we used to have in, in residential water use, home water use, was 30% of their total overall use and mm -hmm. because that big bell in the middle of the summer months. Well, mm -hmm. you know, that if you look at, and we haven't seen that curve in a while, and, and we didn't have time to reproduce it, uh, today, but um, that that curve has definitely flattened, right? And so I think that's what you're talking about the the bell part, at least for for residential, right? The, that and more. That more, okay. Yeah. I mean, I think I sent you the what I dug up from the the memo that Sue. Um, I, I I went and looked at that memo. Yeah, because you cited it last time. Send it yeah. to Leslie. Yeah, I sent an email. But the, um, again, I don't know if the other director's um, thought process or information needs are the same as mine, um, but I, I get a lot out of looking not at averages, but looking at, looking at uh, the details. Yeah, well, we want to give you what you want to help you with the rates. I mean, that's our job. I thought the question you were asking is, um, why the big drop right now? Oh, yeah, that was okay. last meeting. Okay, yeah. okay. I was like, yeah, okay. I just want to make totally sure I, I, I nailed it. I, so. I made the bridge to the rates. Okay, okay. You know, that, okay. that that's, you know, having more information helps me with the decisions. Well, maybe outside this meeting we can meet and we can show yeah, you what's going sure. on and see what else you need. And I would hope that there's a presentation on what Sue did in the in the near future to let the other directors, especially Jennifer, and you weren't here either. You, yeah, you Carla, here. it's just us two. <laughs> I don't know, Tom, did you get... Was it useful to you? Valuable at the time, yeah. yeah. Those to tease out what we could get information from. And seeing how it's changing, I think, would be even more valuable. And it, I'm sure it has changed. Just to add, in this time of big data, it seems to me that the more information we have, the better decisions we can make. So I, I'm all for that. Yes, yeah, so following on that, we are looking at... Um, what uh, Dr. Holt did and making sure that it's either part of the analysis done and the water rates or come to you saying, hey, is this, you know, do we need all this or what? So we're, we're evaluating that right now. And we can bring back Dr. Holt's uh, presentation on its own. I mean, it's quite informative when yeah. you look at it. it. It'd be a good starting point. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. And it doesn't have to be the entire presentation. Just, well, the, the the visuals are good. She did yeah. something kind of interesting that I'd never seen done where she hooked things together. Yeah. Yeah, it's done. I'll just bring back the memo, if that's okay. In your old memo. Any comments from the public? Thank you for uh, following up on Director Jaffe's question. I would like to request that you're, you're all talking about the presentation by Sue Holt, but it's not in the, um, the agenda packet. And I would like that you include it in the agenda packet so that we all know what you're talking about. Um, only two directors are aware of it or, or heard it, and the public maybe not at all. I so, about bringing it back so that people can see Yeah, we're see talking it. about re bring it back. Okay. So, all right. So we, didn't come up before this. Okay. It's referenced in the memo, so anybody can go online and find it right now. So it's available online? Okay, thank you. I didn't see it in the agenda packet. Um, I, I want to uh, 
say that I'm very curious to see the state-funded AEM study results to really show where the saltwater freshwater interface is. And it ties in with this reduction in use, reduction in production that, that's happening. And I'm, I'm wondering if this all will be tied in not only with the rate increases, which could be part of why people are using less. It's so expensive. Um, many people I know are having a difficult time paying their water bills and they're conserving all they can in your district. Um, but also, will this discussion be included in the optimization study that I think is before um, coming up before your board? And I learned about this at the Santa Cruz City Water Advisory Commission. They were talking about that, and they're going to be reviewing that at their meeting this month. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks again for for digging up that stuff and bringing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I look forward to more of the more of the information in the future. Bless you. Me. Sure. All right. Thank you.